with this new approach, now we understand why that's fine. So very quickly, the economic intuition that Eric is giving is he wants to say what it would mean. And, and notice this approach is going to handle the problem of there's different goods that are available in 2025. Another issue is the people themselves could be different. I mean, literally, the people who were alive in 1913, a lot of them aren't going to be alive in 2025. So there's that problem as well. All right. But even if you just do it on an individual level, like you want to say, oh, there's some guy who he's 20 years old and he lives in Phoenix. And, you know, what, what would he do with a hundred dollars? And then you want to say, okay, now 20 years later, the guy is now 40. He's married. He's got two kids and he doesn't live in Phoenix anymore. Now he moved to Miami and you want to say, what is, how has the purchasing power of money changed in the interim? And so really what you're kind of asking is, how much money, how many dollars would I have to give this guy now so that he would kind of be the same as the $100 gave him back when he was a 20-year-old and was single and living in Phoenix? And so you see how it's not just that, oh, the types of goods available and in a different ge geographical location are different, but the guy himself is different. He's not the same person. And so you see when you start getting into this, like it's a really complex problem. Like there's some, you know, deep philosophical issues going on, right? 